Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'm looking at Garlandia by Lorenzo Matotti and Jerry Kramsky. This is another one of the books that I got in the Fantabucks deal. I pre-ordered everything I wanted from Frantagraphics for the rest of the year and then cashed in all of my gift cards to get uh, older books that I've wanted or things that looked cool. Garlandia is definitely a book that I've been intending to get. Uh, I saw, I you know, seen the art. Some of our viewers have recommended Matoti's work, I believe. Um, so, you know, it's it's been on my nab list for a while, and I'm really, really glad I got it. Uh, it's it's just got this gorgeous artwork in it. Really lovely use of line everywhere. The cool thing about the line, and I'll have some other examples, is just like no matter how crazy and scribbly it looks it's always volumetric in a way they really like here you can see the line work just wrapping around to create a sense of space and depth and the artwork is just so fantastic there's a dedication to moebius and the fantasy worlds of fred and moomin the moomins um so you can see that the book has this really, you know, it doesn't feel derivative of any of those, but it has the spirit of just pure imagination. It's very archetypal type of story, um, hits on some standard archetypes, but then goes way off in its own direction as well. Here you get some more of like the dense cross hatching with really nice line weight variation, making everything feel, feel very, very round. So. It looks a little weird and abstract at first, but it's actually got a very consistent story throughout. This character here, Hippolytes, um, he's been, his wife has been missing for a week. His wife is named Cochineal. I'm going to mess those up. Um, but he's been waiting for her to come back, and she hasn't been. He goes to, this sequence is just a, a stunning, stunning art in this sequence. The smoke comes out in Garlandia. These are the Gars, these little characters. And this smoke comes out and dances. And I don't know, I don't think they're having a hallucinogenic experience. It just performs for them and it's an oracle. And I just, the art in this sequence, through all of the abstraction and the pattern, like it's, it seems like it should be, oh, he's just making a mess. But it's so hard to do something like that intentionally and have it come out well designed like that and the use of line is just exquisite and all of the forms writhing around and morphing throughout this sequence it's just really beautiful stuff coming into like this butterfly like imagination on full display like really visionary type of art i mean come on look at that it's it seems so out of control but it's so controlled at the same time that I, I'm just absolutely charmed by it. Um, here's another creature in the book. It's a big stone mountain, and they piss the mountain off, and so the, the journey then becomes to go basically soothe the mountain and win back the land for the Garlandia people. Uh, Hippolytes finds his wife, and she's been out um, giving birth to a child, so she went to a lake where they, they build these little platforms and give birth. And just some really beautiful, like, tender moments in all of this wildness. Even though these are, like, strange characters, they act really well. You know, like, and you can really feel empathy for them. That's, it's just, you know, fantastic art. The writing's really, like, brisk. It doesn't take that long to read the book. Uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours for how many pages it's got. It's really, really brisk, breezy read. But that doesn't sacrifice any of the emotional content or anything like that. So that's really nice. Uh, love the way this character's face is drawn. Again, it's one of those things where you look at it and you think it should just read as like an absolute mess of crazy lines and the crazy thick line weights and stuff, but it's so expressive. This guy's wrinkled up old face and you get so much form out of it. It's, it's just really impressive work. Here's some more of that just wild. It should look like he's scribbling, but it's so descriptive of the wind. And like the the motion of how the wind is swirling, just stuff like that all throughout. Here's some nature scenes. 
and again, you know, like I, I don't ever like I can separate everything out still texturally, even though it seems like he's just scribbling. <clears throat> this moment right here is I tagged because there's this really interesting thing. I I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, uh, where the line goes from black to being like a, a washy look, and that reproduces pretty well. But at same here, there's like this gray look. I'm hesitant on this book whether I think it's really well reproduced or poorly reproduced. I'm I'm not sure just because of how the end papers look where they almost look like a pencil. I mean, it's obviously brushwork with the dry brush like grating over the tooth of the paper, but neither of the images in the end papers in the book and all of the line work in the book is so crisp and flat. It doesn't look dry brushy to me uh, like the end papers do. But there are moments in the book where it looks like he's drawing with a second ink that's that's more like an ink wash. But he's drawing with a pen or a brush and making really fine lines. And if that's what's going on, I could see why Fantagraphics had a real hard time reproducing it like some of these lines here almost to me look like they were done in a gray and then they're reproducing them with the dot pattern but it could just be that they half toned all the line work and i think that is what happened there's just these really fine lines like right here that skip over here you can see it better they're skipping over the tooth of the paper and uh, when they're they're doing it in a half tone, it winds up looking like a gray because it's just a string of dots. But I'm not sure. It might be a gray, and then they're trying to accommodate for that by half toning everything. Um, so I'm not sure. It's on a really really nice paper. Like the paper feels really nice. And depending on how the original art was done, and again, like what I it, neither of these end papers could I find them in the book, so they may have been produced differently as well. I'm really, really not sure. This looks more like brushwork to me, but a lot of this stuff looks like really thin pen work. So I'm just not sure. I would I'm I should look. I see if I can find the original art from this online. There's some pages where it's definitely black ink all the way through, and you still get the half toning throughout. So uh, again, I'm finding that now that my eyes are attuned, that Fanographics, they do really good with color work, really, really well done color work, but I'm finding that I don't like what they do with the black and white, or at least there's an, an era of time. I think this is an older book. Um, let's see. It's not got that new Fanographics like pin mark with the Jacob Covey designs on it. Uh, so there seems to be a point at least like in the mid 2010s where Fanographics wasn't handling the pen and ink work as, as well. And I think this might have fallen into that. So that's my only complaint about it for, for the eagle eye people out there. The pen work doesn't reproduce exactly right. But I, I don't on this one I don't want to like totally finger shake at Fanographics because it looks like there might be something that the artist was doing that complicated uh, the process. But e either way, it's it's a really good read. It's a touching book. It's kind of archetypal and mythological. And then the artwork is just, I mean, absolutely stunning. So highest recommendations. If you want to see, you know, perfectly reproduced pen work, make sure you check out Strange Death of Alex Raymond by myself and Dave Sim, reproduced by Sean of Living the Line. And then make sure that you're keeping an eye out for the rest of the books that Sean has coming from Living the Line, Yuichi Yokoyama's Plaza, Eric Creek's The Exile, and Mille Van de Peet's Centralia. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. What?